this is Joe Pryor of the Virtual Real Estate Team in Oklahoma. And, you know, I, every month that I, you know, might be doing videos, I have to talk about interest rates because, as you know, inflation is still out there. Now, you know, at one point they were measuring it as high as 9.1%. Uh, now it's kind of got, well, it's getting a little better at 8.5%, which is still unacceptable. And the Federal Reserve has still indicated that they really want to fight inflation, which means that at the September meeting, rates are probably going to go higher and then another increase before the end of the year. Now, a lot of the people that I'm reading, and again, I'm not a world-class economist, but I read a lot of them, think that maybe in 2023, there'll be a little bit more of a dovish uh, kind of look at raising rates. That they think that basically that, you know, because energy prices are going down for one, uh, food prices are supposedly supposed to be getting better. Uh, and so, and what they're really looking at, those two volatile areas, taking them out is the core inflation. And that's what they're really concerned about. And there's still a problem there because rents are one of the things that they analyze and rents, as you know, are going up. So it's kind of sticky, isn't it? So here's the message. You know, right now, um, interest rates are higher. I mean, let's face it. You know, when you get two and 3% interest rates, that was nuts. That was crazy. The only reason that you got that is because the economy was really, really bad. And that's a bad thing. I mean, COVID has affected us unlike any of the recessions that we've had in previous times, even the one in 2008, which wasn't great. They've thrown more money uh, in terms of trillions of dollars at rescuing the economy. And that's why rates were low. They had to do that because banks had to borrow at low rates. So you could buy a car, you could buy a home, you could do a you know, signature note, whatever it happened to be. Keep the economy really flowing and it didn't work. But the price that you have to pay is inflation. So the thing that you can do when you do is, let's say your rates are six and a half percent, you know, for an investor. And that's still a decent rate because if you're talking about 8.5%, you're still 2% below the rate of inflation. You're still better off doing that six and a half percent. But Here's the thing, let's say you take two points, and then all of a sudden the rates go down to maybe 6%, a half percent difference. And if you start looking at the difference in the payment, and it takes seven to 10 years maybe to pay that back, on a 30 year loan, you know, you got 23 to 20 years, you know, left on the mortgage at these lower rates. Because basically, if you're buying a single family home, for instance, you're in it for the long term. And so you still have that long-term lower interest rate. Now, even it's a situation, the maximum they can do is 3%. Now I've seen rates as low as five and a half percent on 20% down for investors uh, on that in 4.875 on 25% down. So you can always get a lower rate on 25% down, but it's tax deductible, something that you want to think about in terms of locking in a lower rate. If you can lock in as low as five and a half, and inflation is eight and a half, you're making 3% on your money. It's a negative interest rate. I'm not saying this is right for all people. Maybe it does or it doesn't, but it does create a better cash flow situation. It also is a situation where it gets paid back and then you have a long-term low interest rate because the United States is unique in having 30 year fixed rates. And in the long term, it's going to help build your wealth. So think about doing buy downs for interest rates.